Hey, what's going on? YouTube Kenny here. And today I want to take you through my absolute beginner's guide to trading in the markets, trading, pseudo investing, generating wealth, basically extracting alpha from the markets. And when I say alpha, because this is a beginner guide, I will explain what alpha is. Alpha is when you have abnormal excess of returns, basically against kind of a baseline. So the baseline that most people use is basically the S&P, which is a basket of American stocks, 500 of them, the best ever. Um, for America. In fact, Tesla just joined the S&P. Um, so those 500 stocks, if you can beat that rate of return, then you are generating what's called alpha. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're thinking about right now. I'm doing this for two reasons. So one, basically, I want to pay it forward. Uh, I wish I had this thing and it's going to be a consolidated place. You obviously have to like my mannerisms, like the way I present things and generally aren't annoyed by my stupid jokes or else this is not going to be a conducive learning environment. Two, doing this for the five subscribers I have. Thank you very much. I salute you. I don't know why you're watching, but thank you for watching. And uh, I, I really, really, really appreciate it. But it's going to help those subscribers get into the mind of this guy and figure out why I strategize. That's not a word. Why I structure my strategies in a way uh in the way that I do. So let's go ahead and get into this. This is going to be just a very casual conversation. I'm going to do this in one cut because you know, if you've watched enough videos, I'm lazy. So one cut is the only way to do things because it's faster. Uh, I also did a video about this. Anyways, regular. Here we go. So this is my trading process and I'm going to actually, believe it or not, try to talk you out of trading. So the answer that you should come away with is either one, should I trade? And if I after this whole thing, you still think you should trade, then great. Let's go. Let's watch the other videos, you know, and click buttons, obviously, the, all the buttons. Um, the second piece is really focusing in as you watch this. I'm not going to teach you my trading style. I want you to develop your own trading style. And um, you might get some paper cuts or some bruises. If not, that's because you're paper trading and you did it right. But again, we'll talk about that um, and we'll get through it. Oh, paper trading. You're like, Kenny, what is paper trading? It's supposed to be a beginner's guide. It's simulation training. I don't know why they call it paper trading. They should just kind of call it simulated trading, right? There's no money involved. You're just trading and then you're practicing. You can do that forever. Do I recommend it? I wouldn't recommend it for myself, but I'm like the outlier. But for most people, you should probably paper trade. That's like the recommendation. That's like the safe recommendation because most people aren't like me. Um, but, you know, I have a very visceral understanding of uh, <laughs> how the market's going to take away my money. So let's talk about this. Let's think about uh, why or how we should trade. So let's go through this. Mm, guys, where did the screen go? Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Let's go back. All right. So contents, first part of this, the first chapter, if you will, first episode is mindset. We're going to talk about all about mindset today. And on the rest of this stuff, we'll go over that in the following uh, kind of episodes. I think there's nine or 10. Um, but basically, we're just going to figure out what your edge is in the markets, kind of structure uh, some trades in a way that would make money possibly. Um what all the smart folks are thinking about and how you should see it, right? How you should look at the market. And then we'll go over technical analysis. And a lot of think, people think that this is Fugazi magic, but for every person who thinks that, then they're just not really thinking hard enough because what it essentially is, it's just a graph, right? It's a way to visualize a time series of events. If you think a graph is not useful into, into kind of illuminating or highlighting anomalies, then okay, whatever. Yeah, it's fucking... <laughs> garbage, sure. But for the same people who say that, I would say that their fundamental analysis is flawed. Try to do a fundamental analysis on Tesla, right? Show me a DCF model that actually works without trying to overfit your data, right? It's ridiculous on both sides. So whoever says technical analysis is not useful, I'll say the same thing for fundamental analysis. We can go back and forth on this. There's plenty of studies going on. Um, and that's why quants do things the way quants do it. If this thing was solved, if the markets were truly solved, then nobody would be trading and I wouldn't be taking your money from you and you wouldn't be taking my money from me. So that said, well, we, we will be doing some technical analysis. I don't, I do think some of it is Fugazi magic. Like once you get into like, uh, like Elliott wave and just like 
I mean, generally loosely, maybe okay, but like if you're trying to be too specific about it or you're not specific enough and you don't know what percentage of the time things happen, then I think it's kind of silly. Um, yeah, we'll read the charts, teach you how to look at a chart, bars and oscillators, and then obviously time frames. Then we'll go about choosing a broker, whether or not you want to do it. You know, if you want to short the market a lot, then, you know, if that's where you find your edge, then you're going to want to do a different broker than, than I typically use. And then we'll do the uh, beginner's guide recap. Okay, so that's where we're at. Let's start out with mindset. Mindset. So the thing that I want you to understand is it's a gladiator's arena. It's an arbitrage situation, meaning I'm trying to take your money away from me. I'm trying to take your money. That doesn't work. Okay. You're trying to take my money. I'm trying to take your money. There's always somebody on the other side of the trade. So with that, think about it. There's the smartest folks in the world. And you know America is disproportionately talented. All the talent in America is disproportionately in the stock market, in finance. Um, And that's kind of been like, (laughs) it's just the reality of the situation because there's just so much reward to being good at it, right? So if you look at it that way, the smartest folks is what you are trying to beat. But you have a statistical, well, you have an edge. You can create an edge for yourself, but you got to really think about it. And you got to make sure that you're using it every chance you get, right? So we'll talk about that. Um, So the next thing I want to do is actually going to be very kind of extra. Um, I'm going to read something to you. It's one of my favorite quotes from a man called Theodore Roosevelt. He got shot and he still did his speech. And then he still finished his speech, rather. Um, He's one of the guys that I definitely think is a little bit of a baddie. And uh, this is his quote that I will read to you. So um, here we go. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds. Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. All right, sorry for getting really extra there, but it means a lot to me. I think this is a good quote to really represent how you should be thinking when you're trading. Um, You just got to have your head screwed on straight, right? And don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do anything. That's going to be a theme here, guys. That's going to be a theme. One of these days, I'm going to tell you the story of my life. And then you're going to be like, okay, that makes sense. All right, let's get on with it. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is diamond hands, all right? The principle of hodling, holding on for dear life. So the issue here is um, you should never, ever, ever, ever panic sell. You got to have a plan in place before you sell. (laughs) If you bought something and you don't like the way it looks and you sell it, um, sell it because that's where you planned on selling it. Don't sell it because you see a bunch of folks uh, uh, coming out of the market or whatever. You know, there's, there's definitely instances where there was flash crashes because of software glitches. I mean, there's only one ever, but still. You know, people lost a lot of money there. And some people made a ton of money buying those dips. They're like, there's something wrong. I'm buying these dips. And you would have been right. And there's folks who, excuse me, absolutely knew that. So, you know, always have a plan. Always know what your limit is. Um, and you're, you're, it's really just your tolerance of pain. And you got to find that out. There, that, and this is the same reason that I, I wouldn't recommend for people like myself. For you, maybe it's completely different. Everybody's going to recommend that you paper trade, right? Because they don't want to. Well, actually, you know what? This is what we need to do. Guys, hold on. Read this. Good. You read it. Pause it. Read it. Good. All right. Let's get back. All right. My point is um, you're going to pay tuition. There's some form of tuition. You're either going to go to college and figure it out or you're going to make a bunch of bad trades and lose a bunch of money. But that will prevent you from losing money in the future. Um 
Yeah, I mean, especially when the stakes are low. So, all right. All right, so we're going to talk about index funds. So, again, we talked about the S&P. It's a bucket of stocks. It returns roughly about 8%, right, yearly. Um, so it's bench. It's a benchmark against 500 basically stocks in America. And I just said that, but I just saw the bullet, so I had to read it uh, like a little monkey. Um, but still, you get my point. They're stocks. They're good stocks, 8% a year. And what I want to do here is I want to bring up um, – let me see if I can escape here. I want to bring up – okay, I want to bring up the compound interest calculator. So, so if you are – what's my demographic? I think my demographic is mainly 25 to 30. Okay, let's say you're 30 and you want to retire when you're 65, um, so 35 years. Just in case you haven't seen this, since this, this is a be complete beginner's guide, this is the power of compound interest. So you have 35 years, you want to retire at 35, right? Um, say you put $5,000 uh, in and you put in monthly $100 a month and then we'll do an annual return of 8%, which is the S&P. So you would end up with... Uh, $280,000. And that's if you only put in $100 a month. So if you went up to $400 a month, which is really realistic, $100 a week, you almost get to a million dollars. And then you say, oh, well, Kenny, when I'm in my 30s or when I'm in my 40s, I'm going to have a better paying job and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Let's do 800. Um, and you make it to 1.729 uh, million, right? So if this number here looks good to you, then you should probably not day trade. Um, I mean, this is a rather guaranteed way to get to where you want to get to. So the path is there and the path is very clear. Um, there's lost decades is what they call it, but essentially, I mean, you can, um, you can really get there. So let's um, go through, um, just take a look at this S&P. So if you, as you can see here, the S&P from 94 to, to now, 2020, I almost didn't know what this year was, guys. Um, you know, we got, what, 679% roughly, probably 650 or something like that. I'm probably, probably a little bit off. But, um, yeah, I mean, you're going to get good returns here. And then the, the other thing is, though, like if you look at, like if you would have put in your money in 2000, and to 2007, you wouldn't have made any money. And this is what, um, seven years? Like like I said, it's almost a lost decade. Um, and especially if, you know, I'm not trying to scare you here, but like say you were getting ready to retire, like right here, right? Could you imagine that? Like what do you do, right? Anyways, so you get my point. There's never, nothing in life is risk-free. Um, so you're buying, you're, you're buying, you know, you can't buy insurance in life, right? I mean, you can life insurance, but you can't insure luck. Um, so things happen. Um, and again, what if you're like, okay, we finally made it. Now I can retire. You know, I waited three years and then you get this, right? Um, yeah. Or if you would have sold here, you would have lost. If you would have sold as you were getting scared, you could have lost 30% of your wealth right here. Uh, especially for folks who were trying to retire right there, you know? It would have been it would have been real painful, and you'd have to wait this out. So, um, there is a book called Unshakable by Tony Robbins. Um, it's a pretty good book that that kind of goes through the mindset of basically just putting your money in an index fund that has low fees and just letting it ride. Um, or else, there's other kind of ways to do it too. You can generally look at other. Uh, funds. Uh, ARK Invest has a bunch of popular ones this year. You've probably have seen it if you're searching for stock market videos. Folks are quoting, uh, following them very heavily this year. It's like an innovation ETF, uh, if you will. So anyways, let's get back to this. And all right. So again, if any of those numbers look good to you, then I'd say stop and just invest. Like you have a path forward, just put it in the compound interest calculator. You'll see exactly how much you're making and, and how long it'll take to get there. And you say, okay, well, well, crap, Kenny, I could put in freaking $500 a week if I knew I could get there in 20 years, right? Well, you can. So 
do that. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so there's that. Um, but if not, this is what I'm saying here. This is exactly what I'm saying is, you know, define your time horizon. If you're trying to do something in five years and, and you know, you have um, an investment, I mean, you think about it as investing in a business, right? Um, it's possible the business, you know, accelerates and your your principal principal uh, investment becomes a unicorn, right? It's absolutely possible. But, you know, there's also a possibility that the business fails. There's plenty of genius folks that, that got together and, and, and failed. <laughs> there's literally a book called When Genius Fails. It's about, uh, about some folks uh, in the stock market who were super smart but blew it. Um, and blew it so bad, in fact, that they need to get bailed out. Um, so, yeah, uh, point is uh, there's, there's an element to risk, of course, but, I mean, if you have $1,000 to start with and you're willing to take that risk, then you can definitely turn it into a lot of money. Um, it just depends on how you do it and how you extract alpha out of the market, like we were talking about. And the final thing I do want to leave you with, you know, on this episode is here's some questions you should just ask yourself, right? Um, these questions is are kind of the touchstone or the bedrock of defining or figuring out if you really, really, really should do this. Because if you're saying that you're not willing to put in the work, then, you know, it's just not going to work. I mean, this is what, this is how you got to think about it, right? If you are battling in the markets, right? Like, I, like, like let's use the gladiator arena, um, as a, as, as like kind of a analogy for this. Right. So if, if you're battling it out, right, like, you know, you gotta kind of be a little bit, uh, you have to have a little bit of an ego. Um, you have to have that confidence in yourself because if not, somebody's going to tell you one thing and you'd be like, wow, that guy's smarter than me. I should listen to him. And, and then he might be wrong. And guess what? You just threw away all your money. Um, you have to believe in yourself. You have to have some conviction about the trades or the things you put in place. Because if you don't have that conviction, you will sell. Uh, you will panic sell. There's no doubt about it. So it's all about the mentality. It's all about thinking about this in the right way. So if you have that uh, kind of worry mentality, if you, if you have that in you, then welcome. And uh, I think you'll be, uh, you'll be great. Um, but if not, there's no shame to it. I mean, there is a clear, predictable, uh, low risk path to getting to wealth. So, you know, with that, I'll leave you there. And um, really, that's it for this first uh, kind of chapter to this first program, first episode. And I appreciate you sticking around with me. And if it did help you, then go ahead and click some buttons and help me out. Um, I will say sorry and I apologize for the folks who are the first here and the uh, rest of the episodes are not yet uploaded. But uh, hopefully in six months' time, you know, when folks are looking at this, they can go back and just binge watch the whole thing. So thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.